I think a deeply seated contributing factor to this polarity, the left, the right, the liberal, the Democrat, whatever language you want to use, is because the lack of diversity of thoughts and the rapid rise of echo chamber or mind hive. And echo chamber and biases has nothing to do with intelligence. Like people think the smarter you are, the less nuanced or the more nuanced and more open you are. That's not true. The smarter you are, the better you're at intellectualizing your rationale. And you actually are good at doubling down on your stance against the others. So study shows that intelligence actually correlates with like echo chamber or just, I guess, dogma or stubbornness. I want to use that as our last question because I sense a lot of that in your career. Even now, when you are the VP of BP, when you're still consulting for companies, giving speeches, plus your 20 years in NASA, I sense your humility aside, your ability to be receptive towards diversity of thoughts and really reintegrating and reconfigurating your thoughts and references at times. Why is diversity of thoughts such an underrated topic that not a lot of people are talking about and why is this so important? Your question is more profound than I thought it was going to be. Uh, let me start by giving just a practical example uh, from my experience to demonstrate. So when we're training for a mission, the commander and the pilot, the two in the front seat, are, are making most of the decisions. And on one of the crews I was training with, I had a pilot who thought almost exactly like I do. And it was very comfortable. It was very pleasant to work with this pilot. Mm. He or she could almost finish my sentences without me even concluding the thought. And it was just a joy to fly with him or her in the simulator getting ready for flight. But we made more mistakes than other crews because we thought identically. So we had the same weaknesses and we overlooked the same things. On another crew, I flew with a crew member who was whose thinking was widely different than mine. And together we were far more, we didn't overlook things. I would make a mistake and he or she would capture that mistake before it manifested. And so I began to realize the power of diversity of thinking. It has nothing to do with any other immutable characteristics that society tends to value these days when they talk about diversity. The only thing that matters to me is diversity of thinking because we can reach a transcendent solution because we're looking at it from different aspects. That's my practical experience saying that uh, why diversity of thinking is so important. I, I think to answer your more profound question, why is diversity of thought not so pervasive? I, I think because it's comfortable being with someone who thinks like you, you do and agrees with you do. And it's it sometimes is a little more uncomfortable if somebody looks at something different, but you know, if if you're in a dangerous business, you begin to value that kind of discomfort because ultimately it's going to save your life. And so I think that the same thing happens in organizations that aren't talking about life or death. It's going to make you more successful if you have diversity of thinking and even politics. And we won't go there, but the same thing, if you have diversity of thinking, you're going to achieve a, a better societal answer. Yeah, I mean, not to tackle the <laughs> loaded question of the human nature and the tribalism that's deeply seated in our genetics as well, because otherism or tribalism implies that there's a tribe and it's only a tribe when there is a perceived common enemy. That's a very common tactic used by extremist communities for like brainwashing uh, things like that. If identify a common enemy because I interviewed a former CIA recently and that's what they do. That's propaganda tactics. But that aside, I, it just hit me now actually, Jim, where if you really, really dissect and go deep into the root of racism, otherism, whatever ism, is a lack of diversity of thinking. Based on your references and your operational thinking, oh, they look different, therefore X, Y, and Z. Their skin color, their sex and gender is different, therefore X, Y, and Z. Sure, on the surface is the color, the six skin pigmentations we're born with. But if you really dig deep, it's because they don't fit into your references of the world based on your comfortability. And I think we really need to have more conversations about diversity of thinking. Yeah. Can I give you one more example? As you were talking, that this came to mind. 
we're about ready to launch uh, the first crew to the moon since 1972. Oof. The crew's already been assigned and, and organizations are making a big deal out of the fact that we have the first woman and the first person of color going around the moon. But that's all they say. And here's my example. I had two personal one-on-one -on -one conversations with Neil Armstrong, the first man to walk on the moon. I flew with Eileen Collins, the first woman pilot at NASA, who became the first woman commander of a space shuttle mission at NASA. I, I worked with Sally Ride the whole time she was in the office until she left uh, before I did. And I flew with Peggy Whitson, who was the first chief of the astronaut office. I flew with her in space. All four of these people had three things in common. They were the first at what they did, but they had these three things in common. Number one, they were really good and they deserved to be in those positions because they were the best choices to fulfill that mission. Number two, they understood the importance of being a role model and inspiring people. And they did that job really well. But number three, they really wanted to be known for number one, <laughs> that they were the best at what they did, that they were chosen for that mission because they were the best choice. And that's what I think we should be focusing on. You know, when we talk about Christina Heck and uh, Victor Glover, who are going to fly around the moon, I don't care that it's a female and a person of color. It's because they are the best choice. They are world-class experts at what they do. They're the best operators. There's, there's no one better to be on that mission than they are. That's the way I think about it. I mean, once again, it's slippery slope, but like the idea that identity, like I said, I do have a former policy background, so I'm very well versed in politics. I choose not to engage because it's cancel culture is very real, but like identity politics were originated out of good intention to spotlight the marginalized communities. But then after a while through iteration, it actually diminishes the multifaceted nature of who we are. Once you label someone as a pervasive label, that label overshadows anything else. That's exactly right. And that's why I'm really big on, like, yes, we, we went through a phase of diversity of ethnicities, race, uh, gender equality. Of course, those are immutable characteristics you talked about. Like just being fairness, justice, like equality, of course, who, who disagrees with that? But I think now we have overcorrected and I think society does oscillate pretty extremely just based on the patterns of our society that we live in. But I do hope that one day we as a society, and I think this is how we bypass the polarity that we live in, this chasmic divide in America is have more conversations, have the confidence about your unique skill sets, but have the humility to be willing to be curious and have an open conversation. And I think through this, we can be more inviting of other people's thoughts, other people's references, their thoughts, processes, and integrate. Because like we are the same species, right? And there's so many bigger things to worry about than all these like little things. I think society is losing its focus over. Yeah, yeah, great, I love it. Yeah. But before we, uh, before this conversation uh, goes towards a different direction, um, and I want to be respectful of your time. Uh, this was an awesome conversation. I have one mission, speaking of mission statements for all my preparation, aside from having a great conversations, providing listeners with the value, those are given, obviously. I always ask myself how much through lines and intersectionalities I can create on the podcast with the guest's expertise and my expertise of psychology. And I honestly didn't know uh, how much I could connect because space, aerospace, astronaut. But I think talking to you, and I know you've been interested in brain functioning since you're 10, and you wanted to be an astronaut since you're 10. But this was an amazing, amazing conversation. And I really appreciate your thoughtfulness, your expertise, and your contribution. I mean, just the, some of the figures you named uh, five minutes ago, like you're, you're, you're a real historical piece and you've done a lot for the the history of the NASA and space flight. So I really appreciate your time today.